Let us kneel before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for this, your holy Sabbath day. One we've never seen before and one we'll never see again. We don't take it lightly having a mind to serve thee. And we're so thankful and so grateful to be in the number here today, Father, to break the bread of life. We ask your Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct this study. We thank you, Father, that all hearts and minds are clear and ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. We pray, Father, for the messenger, Father, who will be leading out. We ask, Father, that you use him in a mighty way to speak a word in due season, Father, to proclaim this present truth warning message for the time that we are living in. We pray, Father, that for full participation, we thank you for those visiting with us this evening, as well as our YouTube family who will hear this, if not today, in the future. We pray, Father, for those who are on their way and desire to be here. We bind the enemy and pray, Father, that you make a way for each and every one of them. And Lord, we just want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who makes this all possible. We thank you, Father, that our lives will never be the same again after having heard the word of truth. We ask these and other blessings in Jesus' precious name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Now, yeah, brothers and sisters, Holy Sabbath, we'll have a fourth commandment done by Brother Ken that can be found in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Amen. And it reads as follows. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that was in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that there is in them is, and rest the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ken. Now we'll have a Help the Living segment by Sister Michelle. But first we'll sing Day is Dying in the West. And for Thank you. We would like to sing along on mute. This is coming from our time for singing hymnal, hymn number 41. Day is dying in the West. Day is dying in the West. Heaven is touching earth with rest. Wait and worship while the night sends her evening lamps of light through all the sky. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Lord of life beneath the dome of the universe, thy home. Gather us who seek thy face to the fold of thy embrace, for thou art not. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. While the evening shadows fall, heart of love unfolding all, through the glory and the grace, of the stars that veil thy face, our hearts ascend. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. When forever from our sight, past the stars, the day, the night, Lord of angels on our eyes, let eternal morning rise and shadows in. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Thank you, sister. Appreciate that. Amen. And now we have a help to living sacred by Sister Michelle. Well, holy Sabbath, everyone, and so. Glad to be in the number here today. Our healthy living segment topic is going to be on the subject, the complete health message 7.0, God's design for all mankind, and the subtopic, rebaptism. Rebaptism. But before we begin, for those who may be hearing this for the first time, our healthy living segments are God's prescription for healthful living. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And we've learned that sin 
brings on sickness and disease, and if left unchecked, leads to eternal death. There is nothing more detrimental to our health than losing or forfeiting eternal life. And God's design for all mankind is that we live a life free from sin, sickness, and disease, which is only possible through a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the blueprint. He's our example. The word of God calls him the pattern man. He's also Lord of the Sabbath, and he sanctifies us through his Sabbaths. Only a holy people can worship a holy God. And I always like to close by saying that Sunday is not the Bible Sabbath. God's seventh day Sabbath is his seal, and we can only be sanctified by keeping God's seventh day Sabbath in all of the all of the um, Ten Commandment moral law as well as his eight natural laws. So with that, could someone tell us what are the eight laws of health? What are the eight laws of health? And the order does matter, saints. And since I'm getting no takers, the eight laws of health are air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, and trust in God. And that can be found in the book, Ministry of Healing, page 127, and also in our Natural Remedies Encyclopedia on page 44. So the topic again is rebaptism, And I'm just going to read a passage. This was the inspiration for this, this evening's Healthy Living segment, and it will be a three-part seg segment. The inspiration was from the December 26th nugget that Brother M.K. sent out this earlier this week. And I'm going to read the passage from Evangelism, page three, 373, paragraph two. And then I will share one of my takeaways and open it up to, well, open it up to any comments from the group and then share one of my key takeaways so um, with that, this again is coming from the book Evangelism, page 373, paragraph two, and it reads, this is a subject which each individual must conscientiously take his position upon in the fear of God. This subject should be carefully presented in the spirit of tenderness and love. Then the duty of urging belongs to no one but God. Give God a chance to work with his Holy Spirit upon the minds so that the individual will be perfectly convinced and satisfied in regard to this advanced step. Again, we're talking about rebaptism. A spirit of controversy and contention should never be allowed to come in and prevail on this subject. Do not take the Lord's work out of his hands into your own hands. Those who have conscientiously taken their position upon, upon the commandments of God will, if rightly dealt with, accept all essential truth. But it needs wisdom to deal with human minds. Some will be longer in seeing and understanding some kindred truths than others. Especially will this be the case in regard to the subject of rebaptism. But there is a divine hand that is leading them a divine spirit impressing their hearts and they will know what they ought to do and do it. Amen. And I will now open it up. Well, I'll share my key takeaway and then I'll open it up to any comments or questions from the group. But one of my key takeaways when I read that, I'm always reminded of my personal experience with rebaptism. Um, when I when I got rebaptized, the decision came through. I was listening to a CD, the late CD Brooks, one of his sermons, which, by the way, I've not been able to find this sermon since. So I believe it was the Holy Spirit speaking during the sermon. But what I kept hearing during the sermon was, "What are you waiting for?" And I, I know that that was the voice of the Holy Spirit because 
like I said, I've not been able to find that sermon since, but the point, the, t the takeaway is simply that, that I had one of them, I should say, and for those who just joined this, the topic for our healthy living segment this evening is rebaptism. And we're coming from the book Evangelism, page 373, paragraph two. Um, the take one of the takeaways I had was that it's not a matter of if we should get rebaptized after we come into the knowledge of the present truth. It's a matter of when. So that that was just one of many key takeaways I had after reading this this nugget. But um, with that, I'll now open it up to any comments or questions from the group. Well, you don't want to read on that on the, on the topic, but if you were just you know if you if you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and, and you were immersed. By a minister, uh, let, let's say you, the minister was a was a Sunday minister. Of course, um, your belief that that is an instant is sufficient, or you should, or, or well, the purpose of the second one is insufficient because it was not a seven day Adventist minister, or what? Right. And again, and again, this was this was the revelation I had, Brother Ken, only because I I went through this myself. Is that. Yeah. Oh, sure. yes. Yes. You're not asking you that. Yes. Yeah, what, what is your intake? What is your take on that? What, what Give them Bible and spirit of prophecy. If you have it, if you don't. Praise uh, God. OK, so we know, Brother Ken, that there mm -hmm. are only two classes of people. You're either mm -hmm. we're either those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, which is God's true church, or mm -hmm. we are those who are looking, you know, under another gospel, and it could be atheism, Scientology, Catholicism. All of them are serving the same master, which is Satan. You know, just it's just it is what it is. So there's two classes of people the Bible teaches, and so. If we did anything, sprinkling, baptism, um, there's all sorts of things that people do in other denominations and so on and so forth. But if it, if it doesn't line up and if it was not under the teaching that the Bible teaches, that is, that's Babylon. And that's, that was a lie. That was not. Uh, so what are you saying? I don't know what you're saying. So brother brother Ken's question was if I heard the you got baptized under another in a Baptist I, church. I heard the question, but what are you saying? That that's not bapt that's not Bible baptism. So what are you telling them? That that's not that rebaptism, that's the whole that's why the that's why we're taught about rebaptism. That's why it's needful because that was not that's not God doesn't see that. It's not accepted mm. acceptable unto God. It's just like saying, "Well, I, I go to church on Sunday." Well, that's mm. not the Bible Sabbath. That's a false Sabbath. So we, right. that's why it says, "Come out of Babylon." All right, thank you, uh, Brother Ken. Just to clarify, Michelle's got higher education, so she's very very worthy. And that's that's what happens when you go to those high institutions of learning. <laughs> So I'm going to try to simplify for you, my brother. And I always ask questions. The best way to learn something, I believe, is to ask some questions. So I would ask questions first. So anytime we ask questions, that's when I want a lot of clarity on something because I'm, people are going to listen to this. And someone was telling me today that they listened to our YouTube, which I didn't know they did. And so, uh, so again, I want to just understand. I understand the question. So let's just, I'm going to go with this go with this perspective. So the question is, is it anywhere in the Bible? First of all, who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. So why don't we get baptized in the name of John the Baptist? Because he's not the savior. Okay, all right, okay. I'm so, talking about my no, question really. To, I know, I'm going there, I, I'm going there, but I got to just, 
I'm going to lay this foundation for those who don't have much of knowledge you are on the subject so we can do basic. Then we'll get up to where you're going to. All right. So is it anywhere in the Bible, brother and sister, where people was, was rebaptized? See, that, that I don't know. Uh, but I do know that we talked previously about immersion uh, yeah. in which, which the Bible uses those words. So uh, if my memory is correct, it uses those words. So if you were immersed in the name of uh, Jesus Christ, my, you know, my, my, you know, I think you know where my question is going. But right. anyway. Yeah, I know. But so, so, and so, that, that, and that's the question. So, anybody else can answer that question? Was there anywhere in the Bible where there was re, was people rebaptized? Let me let me be let me just be more pointed with this. Was there anywhere in the Bible? Now we said that John the Baptist, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Amen. We know that. So, and that's true. And we're looking in, in the in the uh, in Luke and John and Mark and all us tell us that special method. So is there anywhere in the Bible where people was baptized in it and under John's baptism and they had to be rebaptized again? Not that I've read. Why? All right. Uh answer to your question. Yes. There was people that was baptized in John's baptism that had to be rebaptized. In the name of the name of Jesus. Anybody want to read that? Yes. All right, let's put it. Say again. I said yes, and I don't know where it is. <laughs> well, Acts, let's go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We all there? Acts 19, 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Is the Holy Ghost a big thing in our, in our beliefs, brothers and sisters, yes or no? Yes. Amen. All right. Since you Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, what then were you baptized? And they said unto who? John's baptism. Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard, they were baptized in the what? Y'all read the name me? of the Lord Jesus. So did they get rebaptized? Yes. Why did they get rebaptized? Because the the first time wasn't in the name of Jesus. Nope. Nope. Not it. They came into more light about. They came into more truth, saving truths. Now, Ken, going back to your question, people who go to church on Sunday doesn't they get baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or name of Jesus? But when they learn about the Sabbath, that is more truth. That is major truth. That's a life changing. So therefore, that's when baptism is warranty again, because Michelle kind of, Michelle said this a little bit, a lot actually, but uh, so they got baptized in a system that was not biblical truths. And here you have people that got here you have people who got named who got baptized in the John baptism, which Jesus was baptized by John. So if, if they had to be rebaptized, those people who keep it Sunday. Who, the, who, who Revelation 13 tells us that the devil gave the beast, which is the Roman Catholic Church, his power, seat, and authority, and he instituted Sunday worship. So therefore, people who go to church on Sunday is baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or in the name of Jesus, whatever it may be. But when they come into more knowledge and more truth, especially as far as the Sabbath goes, which is a whole major truth, which is the Ten Commandments. So you don't get baptized in nine commandments. You get baptized in what? 10. So therefore, when you got baptized, although you didn't, we although we didn't know no difference, and we only knew, but when more light come, major light, then guess what? That's life changing light. Then guess what? We get be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or name of Jesus. So that's when baptizing is warranted again. Now, I, there's another part to that, but I won't deal with that later, but it has, it has to do with with people who's who was baptized who might have backslid 
and then then that's that's a whole different Bible study right there, a whole different I mean subject. But for yes, but for for those who who are in a different denomination or whatever, it's just like oh, just check this out. Listen, to this. what about Muslims who, who may have gotten baptized? And I don't know, and I really don't know if they get baptized. I, I need to think about that because I have a friend that was Muslim uh, in the military. So uh, people who Confucius or people who Buddhists, some churches even sprinkle. We know that's not biblical, you know, because like you said, early kids is emerges. So yes, when we come into major truth, major understanding of the word of God, uh, for those who just came on, the question was asked, we in Acts chapter 19, verse one through four, uh, and the question was asked, if, if I was in a church and I got baptized the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or the name of Jesus, in a Sunday church, and I come into the to the uh, another to the seven event church and know more truth, then should I get rebaptized? And so therefore the word of God teaches us. And one thing about the whole world, and I say the whole world, I'm not literally talking about the whole world, but I'm talking about the majority of the world. The majority of the world keeps Sunday, does it not? Amen. So therefore, since the majority of the world keeps Sunday, and therefore we understand that we should keep the seven day Sabbath because God don't have nine commandments, he have what? 10. So therefore when when in, 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 when knowledge came, just like when John, for those who just came on, which in Acts chapter 9, 19, verse one through four, the question came about you know, Michelle have the living segment about baptism and, and someone asked the question, should I get baptized again? Or should someone get baptized again? Even though they were baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Ghost or the name of Jesus in the Sunday churches, so we read in Acts 19, 1 through 4. And can someone read through, that again? 1 through 5, Brother MK. Five, can someone read that again, please? Can everybody come to Acts 19, 1 through 5? And that's not a Bible study, but we just want discussing some right now. But go ahead. Acts 19, 1 through 5. And it reads, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3, And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5, when they heard, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So therefore, he said, we not even have heard anything of the Holy Ghost and you, since you believe. So in other words, what if they had said, and some of us say this, believe it or not, oh, I, if, if Jesus was baptized in John the Baptist, like, it's good enough for Jesus, good enough for me. We always say that. It's good enough for Jesus, good enough for me. Good enough for my mother and father, good enough for me. Why didn't he say that? Because the Jesus Holy Spirit did. revealed to them what was needed. But Jesus did get baptized by John the Baptist, right? Amen. Because they was understanding what the truth that Paul was teaching. It was not it was not about what happened then. It's what happened right now when Paul was dealing with them. And things had transitioned when Jesus, because John the Baptist told Jesus what? No, 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 no. You need to baptize me. Jesus said, no, suffer to be for righteousness. Baptisms for baptisms for who? Unbelievers. Sinners. Right? So therefore, but Jesus wasn't a sinner, but he baptized the example for us in all things. Jesus did all things for us. So therefore, and, and, and so when John was teaching all the truths that he knew, then when Jesus came along, was baptized by John the Baptist, and then showed them a more perfect way, a continuation of a more perfect way as truths pro progress. And so therefore, when people go to church on Sunday, then they learn about the Sabbath, they learn a more what? A poor, more perfect way. And then we know that the Holy Ghost is a major life change, amen? And is a, a major truth to understand what it is, and what it's not. So as a Sabbath, it's a life changing, but it's a major thing. It's not like, you know what, hey, you know, I'm a Sabbath keeper and I'm a, you know, I found out to be a vegetarian and to get me baptized. No. Is that you were baptized in a system that was not biblical based. 
And the <laughs> thing about and John and not John, James too tell us that we keep the whole law yet if in at one point we what? We'll get the law. Chapter two, James two, verse ten through twelve. So therefore, when we understand and come into more light, understand I'm saying when I say light, I'm saying light that's a system that's and let, let me just simplify it, look this way. Learn a system, and that's not the system Christ set up, and we found out the system that man set up. So when you got when we got baptized, brothers, so whether we want to admit it or not, listen, I was Pentecostal, so I'm talking about myself as well. Well, I used to talk about my old self. So when I got baptized in Pentecostal, you know, like I was talking to somebody the other day, in, you know, in Virginia, I said, you know what? I when I when I went to church on Sunday, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come back thinking that I needed to make a change in my life. I mean, I didn't never think about it. I mean, I went to church, I was glad to get home and watch football. I was waiting. I was looking at it when the pastor going to be finished talking so I can go eat and watch football on Sundays. Not on Saturdays. I didn't watch football on Saturday, but it has nothing to do with anything. But what I'm saying is when we come into a system that God set up versus what man set up, then therefore it is a system of rebaptism taking place. For those who just joined, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing that, that this subject is going on because every time we stop, and get to the end and go on. Somebody let's come on. We got to start all over. But that's a good thing. Amen. For those who just came on, uh, Michelle was given a heavy living, healthy living segment. And, and therefore, the question came out about, since I was baptized in the Sunday church, should I get rebaptized, or is my baptism good? And so we went to Acts chapter 19 and see if the Bible says anything about rebaptism. And the Bible does talk about rebaptism in Acts 19, 1 through 5. And, and the disciples, and we found out or concluded a new sheriff that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. But then when the disciples came to Paul, and, and then Paul said, well, what baptism were you baptized in? And they said, John baptism. He said, have you ever heard anything of the Holy Ghost? And he said, we haven't even heard anything of the Holy Ghost. And then he tossed them, taught them the more perfect way. And so he baptized them in the name of, the, the name of Jesus. And so Therefore, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, then what, like I said, in, in Sunday churches, whether we like it or not, it is what it is. You get mad at me, throw stones, I don't care. It is what, I shouldn't say, Lord, forgive me. It's not that I don't care. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what you and I think. It's what the Lord says. When, when we was baptized in Sunday churches, we was baptized in a man's system. No matter how much we don't want to admit that, God did not set up Sunday worship. It is what it is, brothers and sisters. Man instituted that. And the Bible in Revelation 13, 1 through 11 and 13 says that the devil gave his seat, power, and authority. They gave the beast. Roman Catholic Church, they didn't want to start a Sunday worship. I know sun God. Sun God, brothers and sisters. So therefore, now, since we understand what the Sabbath is, then there, there is warranty for rebaptism. But the but the thing that Michelle was sharing that I didn't bring out yet is it, that is something that you have to decide when you want to do it, but it is required of you. I can't tell you, hey, you need to do it today, you need to do it today. But the Holy Ghost is telling you, hey, this is what you need to do. And so therefore, we learned last week, and I read it last week, that the Sabbath and baptism is not equal. Not on the same equal truths, baptism and the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. We read that uh, last week. Because uh, they came up, and we, I share, I share with that on last uh, preparation day. So, before I move on to the question, and before we get to our Bible study, brothers and sisters, is there any question about anything I just mentioned, or anything someone want to ask before I ask the question of the day? I'll just say, repeat the key takeaway that was shared, and also re repeat God's word from the book Evangelism, page three seventy three, paragraph two. That was the foundational book of text. And then the takeaway, one of many from that passage, is that it's not a matter of if we we are to get rebaptized if led by the Holy Spirit, but when. Because yeah, yeah. some people, some people, there's a big misconception that it's not necessary. But the, it's not a matter of when you read that passage and then, of course, in the light of God's word and Acts 19, it's not a matter of if, but when. Okay. All right. Any other questions, brothers and sisters, before we move on to our question for the day? Yes, I have a 
a, a view on that that we I'm not I don't understand that we it's normal or it is it is uh what can I say it is inevitable or really declared that we should get baptized more than once. I'm not, I'm not clear on that one. Yeah, well, okay. What, what, what were we saying, Brother Wayne? Did you hear the scripture we read? Acts 19, 1 through 5. Did you hear, that, hear those scriptures? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm familiar with those. And the spirit of prophecy and evangelism that that when when people who came out of the other churches and they come into the Sabbath truths, then that rebaptism is rebaptism is warranted. But we shouldn't force them to do that. We should let the Holy Spirit guide them to do that when they're ready to do that. But they, it is required of them. But we shouldn't urge them. We just should teach them the truth about the Sabbath and let the Holy Spirit work to, to direct them. But it is definitely, they should do that. But we should not make them or urge them to do that. We should continue to teach them the truth as it is in Jesus. Amen. Book evangelism. And so, uh, again, I, brother, sister, like I said, you know, when, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and Paul came to the disciples and said, hey, you know, what baptism you got baptized in, in Acts 19, 1 through 5? And they said, John baptism. And Paul said, well, you know, have you heard of the Holy Ghost? And they said, we haven't heard anything such as the Holy Ghost. And we know the Holy Ghost is a major difference. So therefore, they could easily say, Paul, well, hey, if John, Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, good enough for me. I don't need to get rebaptized. But they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They found out about the Holy Ghost as we found out. About and it's interesting too, if John, if they got rebaptized and they got baptized, rebaptized, and John baptized, baptized Jesus, how in the world do we think we shouldn't be rebaptized? We get baptized, we got baptized in the name of, of the devil and the Pope and apostate Protestants. I mean, we say the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in ignorance. But it is what it is, brothers and sisters. I'm not I'm not trying to mark anyone, but we, as I stated earlier, Sunday worship was not set up by God. God has, God has nothing to do, nor has anything to do with Sunday worship, nor has he ever instituted Sunday worship in honor of Son of God. Matter of fact, Ezekiel 8 and 9 deals with Sunday worship. If you really want to read it, they're really short chapters. So, brothers and sisters, we, you know, we that's why we, but again, if we think we know more, and I listen, I don't know everything, but I know somebody who does, and that's Jesus. Amen. And I believe if we if we ask him, he would guide us. Well, matter of fact, he promised us. That the Holy Ghost would guide us to all truth. Amen? Amen. All right, let me pray. Then we're going to ask that prayer. Then we'll go to a Bible study. And I am delivering what Bible study we may have tonight. May the Lord put on my heart which one. But I'm ready for even one of them. Let us pray. Our Father, God in heaven, Lord, we continue to thank you for your mighty word. We thank you for all the saints who came out, Lord, on the last Sabbath of the year. Lord, what better place did all your people gather around the throne of grace? And we plead and beg, Lord, for the last Sabbath of this year, Lord, man, European year, that you'll give us a double portion of the Holy Spirit, that the latter rain will come in our hearts and minds. And forgive us for our sin, Heavenly Father. Those who are sick among us, Lord, we ask you to heal their bodies. Give them yeah. the remedies they need, Lord, in their ailments. To keep back the evil angels, Lord, in their homes and to drive them out. And Lord, let the Holy Spirit come and reside in the angels that have sinned and strengthened and came around our homes and, and with us and guide into all truth. Lord, forgive us for our sins and anything in our hearts not right, in the hate, in the evil surmising, in the dislike or distrust or anything, Lord God, that is not trying to be like Jesus. Please remove it far from us. We thank you for, Lord, not dealing with us without our sin. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your loving kindness. And Lord, we know the power of victory is not giving up. So, Lord, we beg and plead that the Holy Spirit, comfortable, abide in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, good evening and Holy Sabbath once again. Holy okay. Sabbath. Okay. Right, here's a question for today. And our, our Bible study is going to be on the, the true and the last prophet or the, the first part of the 490 years of the 2300 prophecy. So one of those studies or either. Shaken. But anyway, brother, so let me ask this question. If we did not have the Bible to tell us what month was the first month of the year, how would we know around what time Jesus was born? All right, let me ask this again. If we did not have the Bible to tell us what month was the first month of the year, how do we know what month Jesus, how do we know what time Christ was born 
And how do we know what time he wasn't born? Anybody do not understand the question? I can do I can ask it again. For some reason my voice is very clear tonight. I don't know why. Repeat the question. If we did not have the Bible to tell us what was the first month of the year was, how do we know what time of the year Jesus was born? Or how do we know what time of the year he wasn't born? I didn't say the exact month. How do we know what time? If we did not have the Bible to tell us what month was the first month of the year, how do we know what time Christ was born and what time he wasn't born? Go ahead, brother. I, I, I saw a hand, uh, brother. Robert, yeah. you... I'd say the Holy Ghost would tell us. Okay. Uh, and I, I know I, I know you want me to say that's easy, but that's, I need you to dig deeper with that. Okay. The Gospels, um, I, re I recall from a previous study that John the Baptist was born a few months earlier. Yeah, but remember, if you didn't know what month, the first month of the year was, how will we know what time of the Christ was born, what time he wasn't born? Because we, we don't we not know that unless we were asleep, do we not know that you know the world called this thing the Christmas uh yes. uh just past what last when was it? Monday, right? It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh so therefore, uh brothers and sisters, now now you know whether you don't know it or not, that the world say that's the most holy day of the year. And they're so wrong. What's the most holy day of the year? The seventh day Sabbath. Right. Only holy day, only holy day is ever existed and ever will exist. So let me ask this question again. If we did not have the Bible telling us what month is the first month of the year, how do we know what time Christ was born or what time he wasn't born? Not the month. Without the Bible, the only way we could know is the Spirit of God, brother MK. No, I ain't said the Bible. Let me ask the question again. If we did not have the Bible telling us what month was the first month of the year, if the Bible never mentioned what month was the first month of the year, how do we know what time Christ was born and was not born? Remember, you, we have the Bible, but the Bible, if the Bible didn't tell us what month was the first month of the year, how do we know? Well, the spirit of prophecy. All right, we'll go deeper than that. But bro, you know, you know, brother, you know for a fact, my brother, that you cannot do that to me. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> hey, you know, I'm going to ask you to go deeper than that. So go ahead, my brother. I love it, though. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, brother, since we should all know these things by now. We had a serious study on that one day, remember? A nugget mm -hmm. anyway. Have y'all forgot? Are y'all not children of Israel and don't know these things? I could have said master of Israel and not know these things. Remember Jesus <laughs> told Nicodemus, are you all not master? Are you not a master of Israel? You don't know these things? So let me ask this question again. So won't be confused. <laughs> if we if the Bible did not tell us what month was the first month of the year, how will we know what time Christ was born and was not born? Now, by the way, my brother and sister, I don't sit around thinking about a question I need to ask you. So I want you to know that I want you to start. Oh, let me find a question. Well, we know there are prophetic events throughout the Bible, and we know seasons in the Bible, times and seasons in the Bible. And so... If you didn't have a month, if you didn't have the Bible table a month, you wouldn't know what season was, was what. So again... Mm. Now, now I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm not gonna do that. All right, brother. So you know, you know, now you know you you was late getting on. Some of y'all was late getting on. I know y'all was at work probably. Uh so I know we don't want to keep you for long, but I know Brother Wayne, he didn't come here for a 10 minute Bible study. I know I didn't. Just saying. Mm -hmm. All right, Any, anybody got an idea? All right. All right. You ready for it? Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. What was happening when Jesus was being born? What was happening during that time when Jesus was born? What was happening? Yeah. What was taking place? The Mary shepherds and Joseph and all this stuff. The the shepherds, what, where were the shepherds at? The shepherds. They was tending what? Sheep. And the sheep was in what? Field, right? 
Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there any grass in the field in the month of December in Israel? No. So therefore, so the shepherds in the field had to be kind of towards the warm top, warm part of the year, right? All right. Go back and read Luke chapter one. Go back and read Matthew. Remember, you remember the, the angels were looking, the angels were looking to, to to bring the good tidings of Jesus, the Son of God, mm -hmm. being born, mm -hmm. Prince Emmanuel, and and he was about ready to fly back to heaven. The Spirit of Prophet tell mm -hmm. us. And he saw a group of what shepherds in the field, tending sheep. And he said, "Hey, mm -hmm. until, until you this day, what a child is born." Mm -hmm. Man, your God with us. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, y'all should know this story. They, they you go to church on Sunday before they they talks about that like they talk about. I don't know what else, but anyway, now let's talk about this real quickly. What month is the first month of the year? April. Okay. And so therefore, if you, knowing that the Bible and, the, and how do we how do you get that system, Michelle? Jewish calendar. Yeah, but how do you get that from the Jewish calendar though? Who who said that who said the first month of the year? And matter of fact, I I, I asked somebody this a question a, a while back, and I think they said I'm not gonna I, I think they said they didn't know that. I don't I don't deal with zodiac signs, but I, I know about them because I used to live in the world and I was keeping Sunday and you know you don't have to study things, they things come to you. And people ask you all the time, what's your sign? And I say mine's a 77. I said, no, no, what month you born? I said, oh, April. <laughs> so but anyway, uh so what what is the first so what is the first zodiac sign? Don't say that if I've told you this before recently, don't make no answer. Mm -hmm. So I haven't told you this recently, so you know I'm not talking to you. So what is the first zodiac sign of the year? Airy. Ah, you know what? Someone told me that somebody gonna say Capricorn, but Capricorn born in January, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not so. And the first zodiac sign is April. The first month of this is brothers and sisters. God told the children of Israel, I'm gonna come back to the April in a minute with the Capricorn with the Zodiac. I'm gonna show you how the devil does that. When God told the children of Israel. He was going to deliver them out of Egypt, which is represents sin. He said, "This month will be the what month? The first month of the year, month of A, B, the night sun. Mean night sun, right? But the first month of the year, he said, this will be the first month of the year. So April was the first month of the year for them uh, in the Jewish calendars. Now we're in the European section, so you know the, the world is is saying January is the first month of the year. We are they're three months behind us." So uh, four months behind us, per se, we have three. Uh, so therefore, brothers and sisters, now, again, Jesus says that the first month of the year is April in, 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 in Exodus. You can read in Exodus. Nice son of A.B. And the devil is going to be so much like Jesus. He's going to make my first month of the year April too. Zodiac sign April, Aries. That's the first Zodiac sign. And you know, Zodiac is not from God. It's from whom? Satan. Satan. <laughs> And people believe in those things like they believe in their own mother and father. They believe in their mother and father. Amen. So, so, but we know that Jesus was born, if you count from April, nine months later, because the Bible says Mary. If you look at Luke 1, 26, and it's in the sixth month, Gabriel came to Elizabeth, and then you can read on and you can find out um, uh, what my Jesus was born in. Okay? So you read Luke chapter one, and you and you read it slowly, and prayerfully, with the understanding that the first month of the year is April, and then go that far. Yep, April showers bring what? Bring flowers. Flowers, that's right. And April is a new, and they, they got this Esther God. There's another false holy day that they got set up. Esther God, Easter, right? Fertility God. Do a bunny lay eggs? No. No. What do a bunny and an egg got to do with Jesus' birth? Nothing. Res resurrection. Nothing. Not a thing. And I was sharing with someone not that long ago. You know what? Santa Claus never got no. I still the same age. <laughs> now. Five years old. He's still the same age today. And I, and I told you last time we was on, brothers and sisters, that you know if you spell. The same letters that spell Satan is spelled Santa. 
Amen. Amen. No more, no less. Just like a jigsaw puzzle. Santa, S A N T A, say S S A T A N. Same yeah. letters. No, no, not a coincidence, brothers and sisters. Not a coincidence. The devil is deceiving souls for Christ. But it says that in John 10, 10, that old thief come but to steal, kill, and destroy. Now what he come to do? And I, was, and I was talking to someone today. They said, oh, I didn't tell my children that, that Santa Claus brought them a, 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 a gift. Me and my husband didn't tell them that. Uh, we told them that Jesus brought them. I said, you still lied to them. <laughs> they got mad. Yeah. Man. But I had to explain it to them what I mean. If you tell those children that Jesus brought them those gifts, <laughs> Jesus only gave one gift of once a year. Not only that, then you say, oh, then he was born in December. Then you still lying to him. You see what I'm saying? So you got to come clean out of Babylon, brother. So you gotta, gotta, we got to come clean out of Babylon. Amen? got to clean Amen. out. I'm telling you, we got to, brother and sister, you know what? We don't love Jesus as much as we think we do. Now, that's maybe a rhetorical question for some people, and it may be a direct question for others. But brothers and sisters, we can't let nothing come between us and Jesus. We got to keep trying. We cannot make excuses for sin. If we sin, ask God for giving to keep moving on. Amen. Don't Amen. give up. Power is in the, the victory is in not giving up. Amen. Don't care what the devil tell you. Ain't no good. You're right. You ain't no good. Ain't no good. But Jesus is good. Amen. 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 Sister Michelle, go ahead. Also, to your to your point, brother MK. That it, he says he's going to find out who's naughty or nice. That that's taking the place of God. Yeah, yeah. So so right. So so right. <laughs> All right, brother, so is there any questions or comments before we start our Bible study? Okay. If not, let us turn to Matthew twenty-four. What book? Matthew twenty-four. And Talk about the true prophet and the false prophet. And brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that in the last day, God would pour out his spirit upon whom? All flesh. Church. Young men and old men and maidens, right? What is a maiden? Maiden. M-A-I-D-E-N. What's a maiden? The woman that working now. <laughs> woman, right? So female. And was there any female prophets in the Bible? Yeah. Yes, Deborah and yeah, several. <laughs> And what is God's identifying church? What is the two mark? God got two identifying marks in this church. Those who do what? Those who keep God's commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, we're going to show you from the word of God, by the grace of God tonight, that if you're not keeping the Ten Commandments, you don't. You have a false prophet if you got one. And you, can send again, brother. you can send him or her to me. I thought you can get my phone number. Here's my phone number. 904 881-0739. Let me give it to you again, the whole world. 904-881-0739. If you're not keeping the ten, if you're not teaching people to keep all of God's Ten Commandments, even the seven day, even the fourth commandment, which is the seven-day Sabbath, if you're not teaching people that and you say you got a prophet, you got a false prophet. Amen. Was there, was there any false prophet in the Bible? Yes. It, did Jesus say there's going to be false prophets in our day? Yes. Yeah. Well, now let's find out what's the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet. Amen. So, brother, amen. Sister, let us go to Matthew 24. And we'll start at verse 11. When you get there, say amen. Hey, hey I got a question. So, all right. How's everybody doing? Amen. Go ahead. Holy Sabbath. All right. Now, when you said, I forgot how you put it. You say if you're not preaching or teaching. Let me say this. All right, let me make it more plain. Yeah. If you're not teaching the people or keeping and or keeping the Ten Commandments of God, and you say you have a prophet, you have a false prophet. I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. When you say a false prophet, prophet, you could be a prophet in this case, or I could be a prophet in this case. By teaching it. What do you mean? No, and I, I, I guess I'm not. All right. I mean, God's only give a true prophet to those who keep His Ten Commandments. Is that clear? Amen. And the gift of prophecy. Let me make that clear. The gift, the gift of prophecy and prophet, two different things. Because 
we all are prophets, and when we prophesy about something going to happen, we all are prophets, but we all don't have the gift of prophecy. Or maybe none of us have the gift of prophecy. But if you're teaching people the Ten Commandments of God and, and teaching the, the Ten Commandments as it is in the Bible, not as you think it is in the Bible, and then you have a prophet, you have a false prophet. But if you're teaching the Ten Commandments, God's identifying church always have a have kept the Ten Commandments and teaching people to do so, and God has always given them a spirit of prophecy as well. And we're going to show you the scriptures to support it throughout the Word of God. Is that clear, Brother Tony? Yeah, I understand that. Amen. All right. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24, 11. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. brother and sister, write these scriptures down, because I'm going to give you scriptures. It is important for us to understand. Listen, the devil going to come back and impersonate who? Impersonate who? Jesus. Right. Jesus. And if we don't know prophecy, and if we don't know how Christ is going to come back, and we, we don't know how the, what the Bible tells us about how the devil is going to come, we will be deceived. The Bible says in Matthew, in Revelation 13, he's going to be doing miracles. Mm. And you know we love miracles. That's right. Amen. But if the miracle don't line up with the word of God, it, it's a deception, brothers and sisters. When, 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 when Moses went to, in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, 7, 8, and onwards, when Moses went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh that God said, let my people go, Pharaoh said what? What did he say? He said, I don't know no Lord. Who's the Lord that I should know him? I don't, I don't know Lord. Guess what? And then, Lord, and then Moses went back and told God what Pharaoh said, and God said, Take the rod in your hand and, and, and throw it down. And when Moses threw the rod down in front of Pharaoh, what happened, brother and sister, to that rod? Turned the serpent. Came the serpent. Then Moses, then Pharaoh called his who? His musician, his sorcerers, and his magi, and they did what? Same thing. They did what? They, right, they threw that rod down and became serpents, right? It was a deception, brothers and sisters, because the devil cannot give what? Life. That's right. Amen. And then and what the happened Lord. to the what happened to the rod that God had in his hand? That Moses had in his hand. That serpent, that rod became a serpent, and it swallowed up those rods. It swallowed right. those up. Yep. I, I, so I, I can't wait until in the morning to ask you this question, brothers and sisters, about Exodus chapter six. Oh, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so mm -hmm. let's go to let's go to so we know that the devil is gonna come. Jesus said the devil's gonna come back. Person can impersonate him. He's gonna say if he's in the what? If he's in the secret chamber, do what? Believe it not. If he's in the desert, go not there. When Christ comes, brother, so he's coming soon. With is, is is somebody gonna tell you in Christ? If you're living, would somebody be telling you when Christ coming? If he come back, when he come back, no. No. Tell you? why am I gonna tell you that? If every eye shall see him, no, you sleep, you gonna be woke up. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you may think you see you, some of you, so if you take a sleeping pills, oh, that sound gonna wake you up, brothers and sisters. Because the Bible said, every eye shall see him. Amen. Amen. So, for if every eye shall see him, then therefore we must understand that it's not a secret rapture, is it? Amen. Right? Yeah. Not oh, a secret about Christ. Kate, I didn't hear what you said. You broke up. I said, since we know when Christ comes back. And every eye shall see him, there's not gonna be what? A secret what? Rapture. Rapture. No, because guess what? And you know what? Not, not only that, the Bible teaches us in Matthew 24, and also in other words, and also in the spirit of prophecy, that the devil is gonna have his imps, his demons, to impersonate, to impersonate, impersonate what their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand the state of the dead. We need to understand fully, brothers and sisters. When you die, you don't go where? Heaven. Nor do you go where? Hell. Nor do you go where? Purgatory. Amen, hey, mm -hmm. sister. Wow, mm -hmm. That's right, sister. Look at that. That's right. So therefore, when you die, the Bible teaches, I see him, brother Abraham. When you die, if you die, the Bible says you're in the what? Grave. You're in the grave, brother Abraham. Go ahead. Yes. I was going to actually say, like, can you actually show um, where the Bible speaks of purgatory? Um, I know you mentioned there's like a seven-day process to get to heaven. Um, just from a biblical standpoint, can you show 
There's uh, no purgatory. The church teach that. There's All no. right. Yeah. Just from your standpoint, you're saying there's a seven day period to get to heaven. So my understanding of that, there is a holding place then, right? If you're saying that we're not getting into heaven for seven no. days, where would that soul exist? And biblically, it, where does that align? That there's a seven day process to get to heaven. In, in, in the book, in the, in, uh, and that's why we're having this stuff study about the true prophet and false prophet. In the book of early writing, I just read that the other day. She said, It's seven days, we ended up to heaven seven days. Yes, sir. As but biblically, God. not based on Ellen G. White's writing. I mean, like okay. pure biblical writing and text from Israelites to Paul, um, all the way through the Bible. Um, because I just know that when God speaks truth and when God speaks, his word is the only word that stands. And we should be able to go back and comprehend. Yes, we have tools around us, granted. But God speaks to us, our hearts. And even when you read over those scriptures, you'd be able to interpret. And he will give you that interpretation. So I'm just curious, like, where in the Bible is there a seven-day process? Because that's the way I took it, almost like a purgatory. Um, right. I, so what is not. The purgatory, that, purgatory means that you did. And that you really not dead, but you 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 in it and it out in space somewhere it's floating around. That's not that's that's that definitely purgatory. Now let me find the scripture about the space of half an hour. Also, brother MK Revelation twenty two. Go ahead and read that. Go read that and it says the blessed day that do his commandments they may have. Go ahead, Michelle, read that. And it and it reads Revelation twenty two and verse fourteen. Blessed they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And so we learned in a previous study that we can, um, a prerequisite for entering into the gates based on that verse and, and throughout the Bible is, is doing his, all 10 commandments. So the fourth, okay. including the fourth. Thank you so much, Sister Michelle, for bringing that scripture up. Um, so uh, that clearly lays out that we will enter in into the golden city, right? Real skates. Yeah. My question is, though, um, primarily pertaining to the time span. I know Brother MK had alluded to a seven day process. Um, even in this scripture, I don't see where there is a time allotted. Um, but that's one of the, the things question. I do know, uh, yes, sir. Um, I was just going to say one of the things I do know, though, no man knows the time nor the hour of which you know, things will transpire. So in saying that, if we don't even know the end time, I'm not too sure that we could maybe even predict when we're going to enter in to say that there's a seven day process. And then also too, I know that a day isn't the equivalent as it would be to the Lord as well, you know? Um, now, good, good question. And But I want that's why I wanted Michelle to ask questions and not give you the answer because me ask questions. And the less... Let's go, let's go, to, we're going to go back to that verse 22, 14. And then I want to go to this verse, Revelation 18, 1. And then I want to say, I want to get, I think I want to go to Revelation 16 after that. Let's go to Revelation 8, 8 Revelation 18, 1. 8, 1, I mean, Revelation 8, verse 1. And you get to say amen. 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 Do anyone know in prophecy how, how long is it? It's a half an hour? Seven days. How do we know this? They, exactly. Brother, amen. Have you ever studied the problem? Have you ever studied that, brother? Ham, studied that. I'm sorry, Kate. Kind of broke up. What did you say? Have you have you ever studied that? Um, study. Like, what was the question? Uh, prophecy time. Have anybody ever studied? I said you. Have anybody prophecy ever studied? Time. Like as for us, you did a book of prophecy. The time, how time equates to days, year, months, hour, day, like that. You ever studied that? Anybody ever studied that? Amen. No, sir, not in depth. I mean, I just kind of read like the book of Enoch and how he talks about time kind of being non-existent when, you know, he was taken up. But I just was quick curious of how you got half an hour is equivalent to seven days. And then so we're saying that 30 minutes is seven days. An hour is 14 days. Is that what we're saying? And then okay. so, but you, you, how are we getting that measurement and where from? When you look at when you, you know, we talked about in the past. That an hour, that a day equals a what in prophecy? Remember we did that? A year. Mm -hmm. Remember that? 
Um, I would need to like see the biblical reference. All right, brother, the word that anybody know where that is? It's two places. Numbers and Ezekiel. That's right. Numbers fourteen what? Six. All right, and Ezekiel what? Number fourteen thirty four. I think Ezekiel what? Fourteen thirty four. Yeah. Let's go to let's go to and I'm gonna come back to Revelation fifteen and Revelation twenty two. So let's go to um, uh, Numbers fourteen thirty four and Ezekiel four six. A matter of fact, brother Abraham, this is what this uh, study came. This is why this is why we did the study on on false and true prophet because of the fact is you want to say how do we know that other G wives are proper to God? Uh, you know, so we're gonna look at that. That's why we're looking at this now. So Revelation uh, Numbers fourteen thirty four reads what, brothers and sisters? After the number of the days in which ye search the land, 40 days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities. 40 years, and ye shall know my breath of promise. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 4, 6. And I'm not, uh, it's interesting, because Brother Abraham also, too, Abraham, uh, when I deal with uh, the first 490 years, the first 490 years of the 2020, 20 day prophecy, that's going to kind of seal it how that a day for year in prophecy okay. adds up. So Yes, sir. So, okay. So, curious on this one. So, at this saying, after the number of days in which we ye search the land, even forty days each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquity. So, we're saying here, even for forty days each day for a year. I'm just want to slow break down the math. Okay. Pastor John, hold on for a minute, brother. Brother Wayne, go ahead, brother. Uh... Abraham saying something, and Brother Wayne got to say something. Go ahead, Brother okay. Abraham, for your thoughts. Some, uh, some signs of the times, studying about the um, relation nine, an hour, a day, a month, and a year. Right. So it says here, prophetic year being 360 days. Right. A prophetic year, 360 days. And a prophetic month, 30 holy years. So a prophetic day is equal to one one soul a year and a prophetic hour being a 24th part of a day is equal to a 24th part of a prophetic year or 15 days right it's an hour right so 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 half of that is seven half yeah. an hour would be seven and a half days right brother Abraham, go go with your thoughts Yes, sir. So now I was just going to say it and kind of conclude in that. How do we tie this back to the concept of someone who died in 1988? And let's say we're saying that it was that um, 30 minutes equivalent to the seven days. If we understand that God has a true prophet in his last day church. It'll unlock a lot of things, a lot of questions we have about what, what God is dealing with, who God's working for, working with. I'm see, I'm brother, I'm brother. So this stuff is clear, really clear, very clear. Like when you actually break down a year for a day, and the children of Israel was in it, in it, um, in the wilderness for how long? Forty days. No. Or forty years. Forty years. But he, but he, but he, he said I would like in forty years, forty days into a year. Let's go to Ezekiel four one through six, so you get a. So anybody got Ezekiel 4, 1 through 6? We can read it, please. We can get there. Say amen, everyone. Ezekiel 4, 1 through 6. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile and lay it before thee and portray it upon the city, even Jerusalem. Verse 2, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it and set rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city and set thy face against it, against it, and it shall be besieged and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy, lay, lie thou also upon thy left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. Verse 6. Uh, for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, 
according to the number of the days. 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accompanied, accomplished them, lie again on the right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I will appoint it thee each day for a year. So, brother uh, Abraham, brothers and sisters, I just make it brother. So, you see that God said in, in prophecy a day for a year. So, Israel Israel did not stand, and, and you look at Numbers 14 34, Israel did not stand in the wilderness of 40 days, did they? They stayed in how long? 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. And so, therefore, uh, brother, brother, brother Abraham, I was sharing with you when we deal, when we deal with in the morning by God's grace, uh, the study that deals with the first 490 years of the prophecy of, of 2300 prophecy. Actually, Daniel 8, just to go back there, hey, Daniel 8, 14, he said, until 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So if you actually, and he gives us a starting point, and this is going to cover it in the morning. If you look at Daniel 8, 14, and you look at Daniel 9, 24 through 27, if you look at that and, and do literal days, 2,300 days, you would not come up to the time that Jesus was born, nor come to the time when Jesus was crucified, nor come to the time when Jesus was baptized. But if you count this 2020 days as 2020 years from the time of the starting point, to the, from the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, which is found in Ezra chapter 6 and onwards, and you count from that time that the commandment came forth from other Exodus, Darius, and Cyrus, Cyprus, if you count that time frame and you count 2020 days, as Daniel 8, 14 says, you will not come up to the what Daniel 9, 24, and 27 did. But if you come up and take that day for year prophecy, that 2020 days for 2020 years, you'll come up to the exact day and time that the 490 years in it. That's how we deal with prophecy. Because so we would have to do that in minutes, though, you're saying pretty much. No, um, we're, we're converting we're gonna, it. In the morning, it's like half an hour is seven days. We would have to use the metrics now. of minutes within a day. And right. there is 1,440 1, minutes within one day. If you break, so, the, year, you break the year down into hour, year down that way, like Brother Wayne was reading and break it down that way, it come up like four, I would come up to like 14, 15, almost 15 days. But shouldn't the math day. equate the same though for them, Kay? Like it's yeah, math, no. like, you know? Well, well I, I haven't did the minute. I did about an hour within a year. So I haven't did the minute. So I'm just, I mean, if, if you said did, if you said it comes up, the minutes comes up to the, to the seven days, I haven't done the minutes, so I can't agree with something I haven't done. I've done it out days in the year thing. So if you right, look yeah. at an hour, yeah, I haven't done I can do the minutes I'll in the morning and, and come up with that and see. But I would I would look at that the minutes, see if that comes okay. up. All right. But let's let's go here. Let's go here since we're already on the subject. Let us go to Revelation 15, 8. And then we're gonna go back to Revelation 22, 14. Let's go to Revelation 15, 8. And then Brother Tony, after we go to Revelation 15, 8 and 22, 14. And then we'll go back to uh, uh, Matthew 24, verse 11, the false prophets. Then you can ask you a question before I start back to Matthew 14, 24. So let's go to Revelation 15, 8. Amen. All right. Are we there? Revelation 15, 8. Amen. It says what? And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter the, into the temple to the seven plagues that the seven angels were fulfilled. Now, when you go back, to Revelation 15, 7, I'll go start with Revelation 17 onwards, you'll see how long it takes those plagues to fall. And, and no man was able to enter the temple. And that's another Bible study within itself. But you see, there was a space where no man was in the temple, in the, able, in the temple able to enter the temple. And so now when you go to Revelation 22, 14, let's go to Revelation 22, 14. Go ahead, Brother Abraham. You can read that. Yes, sir. I got you. Um, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may All enter right. in through the gates into the city. Brothers and sisters, now, do you believe, and I'm not going to tell you what I believe in to you because I don't want to sway your answers. Do anyone believe or do not believe that there are some people that's in the grave right now who never kept the Sabbath? That's going to be in heaven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How do you know that? The Bible speaks of it. Where did the Bible speaks of that at? 
The dead in Christ will rise first. Oh, all the dead in Christ that we know of. And the Bible, everybody in the Bible kept the seven-day Sabbath. You know that? Yeah, anybody did not know that? From Genesis to Revelation. Everyone in, the, in Revela Genesis Revelation kept the kept Sabbath. No, not not in my Bible. <laughs> what Bible did you? What Bible you got? Nobody kept the Sabbath day and going to heaven in, in 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 Genesis Revelation. Oh, and going to okay. No, I thought you said everyone kept the Sabbath. Everyone that ever that Let's you know, go to heaven. heaven. Right in, 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 in Revelation. Well, so, I guess I, what about the man on the cross? Um, he was a a theft um, and probably he, didn't keep customs. You know, okay, um, now, of worshiping on Sabbath. So that, my question that, would be, in that, that case would be like, you know, he, he wouldn't qualify in that case if we're thinking about this discussion. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Brother Abraham. How do you know he didn't keep the Sabbath? Well, we knew how he was described. So based on the description of the person, we knew his regular habits. So if we say someone's a thief. Um, he regularly stole or he did that and he had bad habits. But it, could, even the question. thief could recognize because... He had the spirit of God <laughs> even was moving through that thief and he could identify. Do everybody know who Saul was? Not King Saul. Everybody know who Saul was? Yeah. Who was Saul? Not King Saul. Saul became Paul. He was a persecutor of Christians. You know, I ain't actually about Paul. I actually was Saul. <laughs> Saul was a bad guy. What tribe did Saul belong to? What council did Paul? But what what council did Saul belongs to? Thankfully, Paul was from Macedonia, but he was uh, he was technically a Jew. Um, I won't talk about Paul. I'm talking about Saul. You talking about Saul? Okay. Paul was yeah. a cool I won't talk about King Saul. Saul. I'm talk about Saul, but not Paul. But I'm gonna talk about Saul. That's the difference between Saul and Paul. Y'all know him, right? Amen. Yeah. But there is also a similarity between Saul and Paul, and that's why that's and it has something to do with the thief. So. Uh, so who, who, what tribe does Saul belong to? Who taught Saul? I guess, did he, did this individual have another day to live, to worship? No, no. And I think that would be the difference but, between the, the man dying. Saul was Paul, was Paul, but I don't want to talk about Paul. I'm going to talk about Saul became Paul, but I don't want to talk about Paul. I'm going to talk about Saul before he became Paul. That's where I'm going yes, with this. Right. But I just think, like, central to, like, my question, like, you have a, a man dying on the cross versus another man who can see another day to see a Sabbath because That's God right. made that. Oh. So in my in my case in that, we have someone who we knew did not have practices of the past that weren't worthy or we wouldn't deem worthy to get into these gates that we're talking about here. But no. he's, he asked Yeshua, you know, remember me. And surely yeah. enough, I know for a fact that theft, what we saw as a theft, got into heaven. And we know that for a fact. The word of God tells us. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. All right, good point. So let me ask you this question, Brother Abraham. I'm directing this towards you now. And anybody else who want to chime in? And I'll come back to Saul later. Now, should I believe what Brother Abraham said about this person who was a thief, who never probably followed Jesus? or never knew anything about anything, and he became a thief and he got caught in, or crossed. Or should I believe a person who died in 1915 who said that the buildings in New York rise higher and higher in 1901 and they were not even built, and God touched these buildings and they be, and the fire touched these buildings and they became, a, they failed as pitch, and that the firemen could not operate their fire engines and it was this scene was taken in New York City, and these buildings were built to take man's money. Should I believe that person, or should I believe Abraham, who's just speculated? Uh, and nobody answered. No, please don't answer this question. Or I'll I just answer want it. You. Actually, I got it. <laughs> you <laughs> so should what, actually. The answer is neither. You shouldn't well, believe me. You shouldn't believe the person in the 1800s. Whenever you should only rely on God, and that is the central theme to okay. that. And. Yeah, Okay. And so I don't tout or boast about uh, spiritual encounters or the messages that God gives you. You only release it when it's time. So to say that someone is not spiritually credible because they don't release what God tells them, I don't think that's wise to say. But I will say that we should listen to God, the spirit of God. And that is the ultimate. 
So let me ask you a question, Brother Abraham. And I'm not picking on you, but we have this conversation. And I'm asking everybody, and I say, Brother Abraham, but I'm not directly. Do the Bible say God was going to give us prophets, female prophets and male prophets in the last days? Yes. Brother Abraham? Do you believe, let me ask you a question. Me, brother, do you believe in prophets, Brother Abraham? Now, I, I'm not picking at you. Now, I, I can have this conversation with you all off, off the study. But I, everybody else. You said, that I, do I believe in prophets? I'm sorry. Yeah. I couldn't hear you. Yeah. Yes, do you believe in prophets? Um, yes. And so I'll say, how do you know a prophet should be your next question? No, no. I'm going to get That's why we got this. No, that, I think that should be central. What is a prophet? One who leads the people back to God. God. That is a prophet. And how do we know? Because he has heard from God. And how do we know he has heard from God or she? Because it aligns with the word of God. And so that's how we know. But yeah. it yes. is only, like I said, in alignment with the word of God and also his spirit. Because keep in mind, the word can be convoluted through time. And, I, and I'm not going to go into translation and how oh, things sorry. have been added and taken away. But I will say that when you know the spirit of God, it aligns with the word. The word is his bond and is, is undeniable. So. Okay, so let me ask you this. You can I make a comment? I'd like to make a comment. Oh, I okay. have a question. Hold on, hold on, talk here. Hold on, talk. Hold on, hold on, talk for a second. But, but, Brother Abraham, you said that the prophet has everything the prophet says must line with the word of God, right? Is that another the defining moment of a prophet? The, everything a prophet say must, that he prophesied must come to pass. Is that correct, Brother Abraham? Or anybody? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. So, Brother Abraham, according to what your description is about a prophet, mm -hmm. Sister White, line up with everything you just said to the okay. team. So, so, yes, I just want to know. say on that note, too. Okay, I'll let you finish. Okay. Hold on, hold, hold, hold for a minute. Let's Ken ask a question, then I'll come back to you. Go ahead, Ken. Just my point is, I mean, I know we went off and it's always good to have discussion, but the, the first issue, um, Brother uh, Abraham, you, you said about the thief. If you just read the scripture, I don't we know that, in my opinion, that you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, anyone on the on, on the on the program, including Brother Abraham, the, when we think about the thief on the cross, we know that he's a sinner, mm -hmm. um, and he, I believe, he said that you know he was there justly because of some sins that he had done. But mm -hmm. I don't think we know the totality of his background about you know <laughs> what type of household he was brought up in. Yeah. Uh, his history. I don't think so we know anything reading the scripture. Mm -hmm. Hold on for a minute, brothers. Can I answer on that, uh, Brother Kenneth? So oh, I would yeah, say that is a good um, um, that's a good point, but I would say also too, so I can't make the assumption, but we also right. can't make the assumption that he worshipped on the Sabbath. So if you make an True. educated, like, just a guess on it, it would lean 60 towards the direction he didn't worship on the Sabbath, 40 to direction he did, based on the pure fact that it clearly states he was a sinner. So if he had those habits, he was a sinner, those are habitual things he's doing. He's not waking up on Sabbath and worshiping. I don't think that was the case. I think we're looking at someone who, at his very last moment, came to some realization. Throughout time, he had heard the truth, rejected it, but God he heard his honest hair prayer and, and was, it was sincere so but brother um, he, i mean he could i mean he could have been a sound keeper or he could not have been um no, in my no, mind because i just no, don't know just no, reading from the scripture itself i you know i, I don't think i can tell to say he was a sinner um no, and what sins he was doing apparently you know if he got caught stealing from people and maybe i don't know what maybe he was robbing people on the byways on the pathways during that time period. I don't know what he was doing, but either way, uh, he was sinful. Uh, he, he acknowledged his sin, and then Jesus accepted his repentance. But whatever life he had, just reading in the scripture, I don't think I can be definitive just from the scripture as to what he had actually done. Well, brother and sister. That's just my that's just my. Well, well I, that's fine. But that's your opinion. That's your point. And brother Abraham, that's his point. But brother and sister, let me make no doubt about it. Brother Abraham just gave a description of, of God last day prophet to his, to his church who keeps the commandments of God. So I took the T, to the T. And Brother Wayne ain't gonna read it. 
But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you what he's going to read, but I'm going to tell you what the Spirit of the Prophet says. And like I said, and, and she said a lot, she prophesied about everything the Sister White wrote has came to pass to the T without fail. Amen. Everything. Only thing happened came to pass yet is a national son in law. So, Brother MK, could one oh, also, also no, say that no, no, has no, anyone no. else written a book prior to Ellen G. White's writing, which I can tell you the book of Enoch has been around? I don't it, think, it to, I'm not it, saying it, that it she is an authentic, but has anyone else written the same thing in comparison? No. Never. Yvonne, and everything opinion, lines up to a T. To the T. But I'm going to show you in the Bible how, the, how God said that he was going to give us the last day prophet and how the church and the church identified Mark. And she, again, uh, and Brother Wayne gonna, may read this, may not read this. And he's going to read it. I know he's been waiting patiently. Spirit of Prophecy teaches us and says that the, that, the, that the thief on the cross had heard and fought. Let, let me go back to Saul real quickly. The reason I said about Saul is that Saul the Bible never says Saul's kept the Sabbath, but Saul was part of the Sanhedrin council who kept the Sabbath. Paul was part of the, who, Gamal taught Paul, who was one of the smartest men back there. And Paul also was in the Sanhedrin council and he taught by Gamal, who also, and Paul, Saul became Paul. So Paul said, by the law, I kept the law strict, without a doubt, when he was Saul. But when he became Paul, only thing Paul, Saul became different than was Paul was two things. He accepted Jesus Christ, and then he didn't persecute the church. The church started persecuting him, believe it or not. So we can say, oh, we don't know. But the spirit of prophecy, that's why we have the spirit of prophecy. And that's why the Bible, that's why we're having this study. Because the Bible shares with us, and God tells us plainly, and and Mo, and, and, and Stephen tells us plainly, and and, and uh, that God will give us a prophet here and hereafter, and you shall hear him as well as them. Hear them, and he's going to lead you to all truth. And they'll lead you to all truth. The prophet will. He didn't say him or her. He said the prophet will be. So therefore, the spirit of prophecy says that the thief on the cross had heard and followed the teachings of Jesus. And he saw how the leadership was, he saw how the Israel, the leaders of Jews, was treating Jesus and rejected Jesus. And he thought that was not the Messiah. So he went back into the world and started living in the way he wanted to live. Brother Wayne, go ahead. And then we're going to continue the study. And I ain't forgot you, Brother Tony, but your question. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. But the only point I had was uh, regarding the identification of um, of Saul. But I don't think that's what you want now, so we can go ahead on. And uh, they found in uh, Philippians chapter 3. That's all. That's all I had. Okay. Three, three, all right. three, three. But, okay, thank you. So so that's why, Brother uh, uh, Abraham, we have to study about is there God, has God given his church? What is the identifying mark of God's church? And so, therefore, when we understand that, and I, no matter of fact, I don't want to, I, 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 I maybe shouldn't say this, but I have to say it, is because of the fact is, the only way through God is through Jesus. If anybody teach any other thing other than Christ, Jesus, he's not of God. And so, therefore, like you said, the prophetess or prophet always point you back to God, always point you back to the Bible, always, in the, in the, and that's why we're going to look at identifying marks of a prophet. They must keep the commandments of God. As a matter of fact, let's go to uh, Chron Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Go right to it right now. Let's go. To, let's go to Second Chronicles twenty twenty. If the seventh day Adventist church had done his job, their job, and not been cowards and told the people about the prophet of God, we won't have these problems we have in now. We have lied to our people. We have told our people, and we have downplayed the prophet. So that's why the world said, "Well, all we, all, all of us are the same." Not, we, we, we all waiting for Jesus. Yes, we all waiting for Jesus. But God said, I will give you a prophet the last day to show you a more perfect way. Only difference between us and other churches, other than the Sabbath and eating healthy. Some of the Sunday churches, people eat healthy too. They vegetarian, they eat clean diets, cleaner than some of us do. But they don't have a prophet because they're not keeping the Ten Commandments of God. And God's word says in Genesis to Revelation, if you keep my Ten Commandments, I will give you a prophet. And Revelation 19 say, 19, 10 say, here's the place of the saint. The true prophet of God, those who have the spirit of prophecy. It ain't but one church in the whole world that claim to have the spirit of prophecy. One, only one. You would think everybody else say, we have the spirit of prophecy. Only one church. She wrote more books than anyone other than Shakespeare. And she had a third grade education. She wrote about the diet. She wrote that how cheese will cause cancer. How secondhand smoke, she said the smoke that the, the, the one uses 
She said the, the air that one breathes from the tobacco used will cause cancer. She used the word dismiss, but me, if you look at despair, it means cancer when you look that word up. She said she saw a time when we would have to be buying water, brothers and sisters. But so God has given the God, I see your hand, Brother Abraham. So God has given his church two identified marks. One mark is to keep the commandments, of God, and I give you a prophet. No, no commandments, no prophet. Brother Abraham, go ahead as we go to uh Second Chronicles 2020. Go ahead, Brother Abraham. Yes, sir. So I just the reason why I had a question because I had did some of the research. Um, and I found that the reason why I said this because all the stuff that you guys talked about when it pertained to Ellen G. White. The other world, um, I had read in the book of Enoch and um, other writings as well. So when I looked online, it mentions Ellen G. White as the plagiarist. So right. I don't know why that's the case. But if you know who a, what a plagiarist is, it is one who takes the writing, the intellectual property of another individual, and then spins it and takes it as their own. Well, you know so, what? Matthew, yes, Matt, Matthew, Mark. Luke and John, all plagiarists. Paul, all plagiarists. Peter, all plagiarists. No, sir. They, this is like in terms of like direct writing. Plagiarizing would say, oh, word for word, are you, are you, this you would all, match not, what that other person would say. Do you not, do you have you not read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? They almost they all almost to say the same thing and just a little difference. They're plagiarists. If you if that's your difference of plagiarists, Paul will play Peter plagiarists. Brother and sister, listen, God, you know, that that's the listen, brothers and sisters. That's the beauty of God's word. When all God's prophets are in line, they will continue to enhance and build upon what the other person says. Yes, sir. That's not, we all are plagiarists in that case. Because what I'm telling you, everything I said, I'm a plagiarist. I spoke Amen. my Bible, I'm speaking my words. Yes, sir. But the only problem with saying about the gospel and like the ones who wrote the gospel, they didn't have the internet to research or it research. Is. So I didn't know that Luke, or I didn't know that during that time, it was not widely accessible. Think about it. The, when did the printing press come about? <laughs> Long after. So if you're thinking about it, these writings weren't always accessible. So let me ask you a question. Readily accessible and convenient to everyone. So to say that, you know, Ellen G. White had a whole database to contrive her writings from if someone was saying she was a plagiarist, that would make sense to me. Let me ask you a question. That person who said that, ask that person is Donald Trump an insurrectionist. Ask that person, is Nixon a crook? Ask that person, is Barack Obama an American citizen? Ask that person, is Joe Biden the Pope? People can say anything on the internet, but when you take the, when you listen, I don't listen. If you are repeating truth, praise be to God, you can be a place all you want to. Maybe somebody may read your right, may not read somebody else's. But brother and sister, when you when we say a plagiarist, and, and we, we when we say we're a plagiarist, plagiarist, you gotta understand what it means. Mean. Like I said, Mark, Luke, James, and John, and Paul, and uh, John all are plagiarists, because they all Daniel. All, matter of fact, Jesus is a plagiarist, if you want to look at it that way, because he spoke about Daniel's writings. If you want to so, brother and sister, let us be mindful of who says these things. And again, if it's truth, faith, praise be to God. If it's not truth, throw it out. I don't mind a plagiarist if they if they take it anything because we all take the word of God as our own. So we're plagiarists. When you say something, you're not speaking your own words. You're speaking whose words? God's words, Jesus' words. So the definition of someone who's smarter than the prophet is is a plagiarist. So hey, if I want I want to be a ventriloquist or a plagiarist or a dummy because I want to say everything Jesus said to the T. I don't want to, I take it as my own because His word becomes me. And I become his word, and we must become one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Holy Spirit. And don't, and, that, and when persons start deviating from something that's not there, they're not all not that far from being a plagiarist, but they're apostatized. But brothers and sisters, make no doubt about it, God's word stands sure. And, if, and again, if someone wrote, was she a plagiarist? In 1901, who wrote it? Matter of fact, ask that person. Who wrote about 9-11 in 1901? Who else wrote about that? Who else wrote about how cheese would, would, would cause what it caused to their health? Whoever, who else wrote about, when, when people were saying, brother, that smoke cures the ear problem, ear aches, and she was saying, no, to the tobacco user, the, the, the air that one breathes from the tobacco user called dispus. 
the spear, which is cancer. The sepsis. What, what, where did she get that from? Did she plagiarize that? Yes, what can I... do? God, hold on for a minute. God has always had a prophet when they kept the Ten Commandments, always. But the people yeah. are so, and you know what? The seven living in the church, you know, and I sometimes I read the spirit of prophecy, and especially at Maranatha, and I have to change some of the scriptures they have taken out of God's word. And the Bible says, anyone take anyone take away from God's word, he'll take them out of the book of life. And anyone that add to the God's word, he'll put, add to the place in the, this book. Brothers and sisters, again, we seven living in the church. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the Baptist Pentecostal, I'm talking about our church. We have done God disservice. We should be ashamed. We are just like the Jews. We are fought in the oh, same whoa, death. Whoa. We, we are. Brother MK, you mentioned that Ellen G. White's writings, it coincides with the Bible and it points back. It kind of circles back to the first question. How does this correlate to seven days making them to heaven? We still haven't kind of gotten to that. Like I said, like I said tomorrow, we're going, we're going to deal with it. We're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to that tomorrow. We break that down. We broke, uh, Abraham, uh, Brother Wayne broke it down from years a day. But you asked about minutes. I said, well, I ain't, let me do the minutes. I haven't done the minutes. I've done the days, years, and hours, and weeks. But, That's how we guess. But we'll go back to that. But, but let, first, let's st first. Let's I'd like to make one comment. Oh, hold on for a minute, Brother Ken. Uh, Brother Tony, then Brother Ken. There's a whole lot. But uh, here's the thing I was going to say that, um, you know, I never believed in Ellen White as a prophet. I did do my research, just like so many of you all have done. And I saw the things that were mentioned, and I looked into it. But here's the other thing that I also discovered, that they also have the story of Jesus Christ in um, Tammuz, the, the philosophy all around the world. You can find the story of not so much Christ, but some goddess or god that came through the same process of a virgin birth. But it's not talking about the creator God. It's talking about... the false gods. Yeah, but the story has always been there. But the story derives from, from my, from my understanding, from the Bible. And the, the, the story is told there. But yet that story that's in the Bible has spread it to their own fancy. I mean, you can even go to college and you can find college courses talking about all this kind of stuff, you know, that, that to do away with God as the creator. And then we and we do also understand that there's a lot of things out there now that you can't exalt Jesus Christ above anyone else because who's to say you're right? It's just your opinion. That is not truth. That's your opinion as to your truth. So I don't know if I'm making any sense now. So what I'm saying with 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 someone with Sister White being in the thing of being a pre uh, uh, how you pronounce it per uh, prejudice uh, yeah Pledges. she it's in good company. If it wasn't, you know, just like Walter Vice used to say, if you come into a church that is rotten, foul. Don't have things going on, then you're in the right, you're in the right place. And so many times, those that say Seventh Day Adventist, uh, the perfect church. No, it's not the perfect church. It's God's church, but yet at the same time, uh, it, it's foul. We 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 we're, we're rotten. We're the worst of the worst. We're not the best of the best. We're the worst of the worst. And if Ellen White is a prophet for this church. For me, it kind of lines up. Um, All right, Brother King, go ahead. I heard you saying a lot, Brother Bowers. I, I don't, I can't consider it the worst of the worst, but I may have misheard you. Um, the points I want to make um, is, uh, Brother Abraham, with respect to a prophet, you know, I think, you know, prophets have always had um, and will continue to have, I believe, problems um, amongst their people. For example, when you look at Moses and his life, um, he was the leader and the chosen one uh, to give insight to the people. And we can see from the word of God that the people, that his own people turned on him and criticized him 
uh, when, when he had a direct relationship, with, it was getting uh, information from God in order to uh, to lead the Israelites um, out of out of out of, uh, out of Egypt. So, you know, if you if you find something online that's going to be critical of Ellen G. White or anyone else, you have to take that with a grain of salt because you know a prophet is going to be criticized, you know, like anyone else. So. I, I, I suggest you not use that as the measuring stick um, because you don't know the source of that. The, 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 that person could have been, uh, you know, very, very likely was uh, working on Satan's behalf to discredit that person. Um, so the, and, the, and the second takeaway I just want to say is, you know, check whenever a prophet says something, you should just check it with the, against the word of God to see if it's true. Now, Brother Marvin said this. I have not read this writing except that said that there was a right, I haven't read all of her writings. I've read several of her books, but um, he said that um, she predicted in a certain year about the, the strike of the Twin Towers. I have not read that personally, but- Testament of Volume 9 to the church, page nine to, to page 11. Testament of Volume 9 okay, I'm not. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just but saying no, I've I'm never read it. it. I don't think. I want you to read it. But no, in any event, if it lines up perfectly, then it's legitimate. And so we should all, you know, we can accept things that line up with the word of God uh, and, and the truth. And because God says when a prophet, if he has said something, it's going to come about, then it will. And so let's just use facts um, in truth to, to make our decisions. And that's pretty much all I have. I know it's getting late. I ain't getting that late, but they, they can go to the club all night and dance and act a fool. They can stay here in church for another 30 minutes. No, I ain't getting that late. No, as a matter of fact, let me let me read that to you right now, brothers and sisters. I mean, I'm telling you, if, 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 listen, if our church, the seven of them had done their job and promote God's true message that God gave us as a people, we would have a lot of issues we have. And they're so busy trying to worry about somebody getting tithes and offerings and somebody talking about and preaching the present truth. And they should be worried about Catholicism and, and all the, and, and they're more worried about people preaching present truth than they are about the Pope. Now, let's, I'm going to read that, Ken, since you since we brought it up. But we're going, we're going, I'm going to go to the Bible, and we're going to read about God, true prophet. Let me get, let me get this book. Let me get this thing right now. And brother MK, while you're looking that up, I'll say something, brother, um, Pastor CD, the late Pastor CD Brooks, he used to say, people are down on what they're not up on, and what that means is simply, anyone who reads Ellen G. White's writings. Like Brother MK just said, we wouldn't have any of these conversations because it's there's no there's not even a hint of untruth or false. Everything lines up. It's to the point where now um, we do know that when we are still eating meat and you know eating flesh and we're not consecrating ourselves and putting away sin, we it it will be will be blinded to these deep hidden mysteries. So okay. that, that's another indication that we can't comprehend something if we're not keeping ourselves before God holy. All right, let me read this. Testament to the church, volume nine, chapter one, page 11. Now, um, this person who said that pleasure, I don't know what did they, who did they, who did she plagiarize? I want to see who did, I need to know that if you can find that person who she plays around, I want to read that writing. And I'm going to see if they wrote about this. She says, on one occasion, when in New York City, I was in the night season, called upon to behold buildings rising story after story towards heaven. These buildings were wanted to be fireproof. As a matter of fact, let me show it. And, and you can Google this. 60 Minutes. And I think 1998, I think it was, when we when they first bombed the World Trade Center, where they had that truck under the World Trade. Y'all remember that? Might have been 92. It was anyway. It was not 92. It had to be 90, 90, 98 or something. When they had these bombs bombed the World Trade Center and only blew a little bit underneath the World Trade Centers. Go Google it. And then the, the guy came on. The engineer came on. And they was interviewing him. He said, these buildings, the World Trade Center, 
could take a direct hit from a 747 and not budge. Don't take my word for it. I'm going to play this. Go, go, go research it. Google it. Let me reset it again. An uh, engineer, he said that these buildings, the World Trade Center, right after that, that, that they tried to blow them and went, they didn't blow up. They take a, can take a direct hit from a 747 and not budge. I'm going to go ahead and read what she says. These buildings were warranted to be fireproof. And they were erected to glorify their owners and builders. Higher and still higher, these buildings rose, and in them the most costly material was used. Those to whom these buildings belong were not asking themselves, how can we best glorify God? The law was not in their thoughts. I thought, oh, that those who are thus investing their means. Interesting. Oh, I oh, I thought, oh, that those who Thus, investing their means could see their course as God sees it. They are piling up magnificent buildings, but how foolish in the sight of the ruler of the universe is their planning and devising. They are not studying with all the powers of heart and mind how they may glorify God. They have life, they have lost sight of this, the first due to man. As these lofty buildings went up, the owners rejoiced with ambitious pride that they had money to use in gratifying self and provoking the enemy envy of their neighbors. Much of the money that thus much of the money that they thus invested has been obtained through exactions, through grinding down the poor. They forgot that in heaven an account of every business transaction kept, every unjust deal, every fraudulent act is there recorded. The time is coming when in their fraud and incidents men will reach a point that the law will not permit them to pass and they will learn that there is a limit to the forbearance of Jehovah. Listen to this. Here it is. The scene that next passed before me was as a loam of fire. Men looked at these lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said, they are perfectly safe. They said that. If you go back and look when the first plane hit the World Trade Center, the other people were saying, oh, these buildings are safe. You ain't got to get out. Don't worry about it. Don't take my word for it. Testimony. People gave these testimonies. But these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. Listen to this. The fire engines could not do nothing to state the destruction. The firemen, the fire engines could not do anything to state the destruction. The firemen were unable to operate their engines. I'm instructed that when the Lord time comes, should no change have taken place in the hearts of proud, ambitious human beings, men will find that the hand that have been strong to save will be strong to destroy. No earthly power can stay the hand of God. No material can be used in the erection of buildings that will preserve them from destruction when God's appointed time comes to send retribution on men for their disregard of his law and for their selfish ambitions. Yeah, it goes on, brothers. So you need to read it. The rest of it is powerful. But I'm saying, now Brother you can say, Kate, oh, yes. Can you repeat the you said 1T, 11 point. Nine, nine testimony, volume nine, to, volume nine of the testimony to the church. Chapter one, started page 11, paragraph four in onwards. Thank brothers you. Make no doubt about it, brothers and sisters. Now let's go back to the Bible and see what God says about the true prophet. I'll be on old people for a few more minutes. You stayed up all Christmas waiting for your gifts. And you can stay up with the Lord and wait for the ultimate gift, salvation, eternal life. 2020 says, Second Chronicles 2020 says, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Jacob. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Believe in God, and you, you shall be what? Established. And believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pause there because I got a lot. I'm not going to have a chance to finish. So I will pause for comments and questions because I said a lot, brothers and sisters, and I said some things to provoke thought and to provoke, listen, I'm telling you, this thing is this thing is clear, brothers and sisters. There's a lot more stuff that is written in the prophecy and the word of God. So when we read the word of God, it's going to clearly define God's church have a last day prophet. And we needed it. We we are contending for the faith. So don't take this personal, brother. But take it personal. You take it personal, you make it, you make it mad and go back and search something. And matter of fact, listen, 
I challenge the whole world, please, someone show me where Sister Wright wrote anything that didn't come to pass and, and, and show me. Amen. It's fine. Again, here's my phone number. If you if you catch the last part, 904-881-0739. And this person with the plagiarist, find out, I want to find out what who she copied, who, who she copied. I want to I want to see that right and see if they wrote about this. There's only what 26 alphabets or 28. What how many? 26? 28? What is it? 26. If we all if we all use those alphabets, we all are plagiarists. I'm being tongue in cheek here. Sister Michelle, go ahead as we come to a pause. No, and to your point about the writings of Ellen G. White, and um, I, I shared this in a previous study where, uh, and Brother Tony had shared earlier about Walter Fight, and um, of course we know he is a Seventh-day Adventist that was actually a, a, a professor, believed in evolutionary theory, and got became a Seventh-day Adventist after he has a powerful testimony and he now has a um, amazing discoveries set syndicated um, program, but there's a gentleman that is on his program who fought the message. And actually his, his personal testimony is that he became a seventh day Adventist after trying to disprove that Ellen G. White's writings, and that's how he became converted. So um, I challenge anyone, I think this is healthy discussion from the standpoint, read the writings, and the writings speak for themselves, but this is not, this, this, this is the only qualification I will make. This is not a regular book that we can go and pick up from a, check out of a library and sit down and read with um, popcorn and, you know, a glass of, my point is simply, this is a holy book and we must pray and consecrate ourselves and beg and plead with God to reveal these things. It's it's yeah. not playtime. This is not something to, you know, that we're trying to philosophize. Th this is life and death. So I okay. also want to caution also that, when we start going down a road trying to speak against spirit of prophecy, we better tread lightly. And that's all I'll say. Praise God. Brother, sister, look, read the Bible. Read, Gen read Genesis to Revelation. Start from Genesis to Revelation. Read the King James Version. Read the Bible. You'll see, brothers and sisters, that Israel, when they start going astray, is when they didn't listen to the prophet. And God was sending a prophet to rebuke them to get them back in line. And then they would get in line for a long for a while, and then they would get out of line again. And every time God would send prophets B times to warn them, hey, you need to listen to the, you need to keep the commands of God and stop being like the other nations. So anytime, anytime the Israel was attacked is when they departed from God. And they know, did, I, I would like to say this. Hold on for a minute, Brother Tony, and then listen to the prophet. Anytime in our church, seven day been in church today, has not listened to the prophet. Yeah, but listen, our seven day been in church identify with later sin. Ain't no later sin not to be commendable. We are, we are, we are tying our hand with the Pope. We, we, are, we are preaching against someone that we are tying our hands with our hospitals and our schools with, with Rome. We're tying our hands with the beast, the one we're telling people to come out of. And we're partnering with them in our schools and the hospitals. And that's why the Bible said there's a, there's a remnant within the remnant. And we're going, to, we're going to talk about that remnant because I got a study on that as well on the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, brothers and sisters. So listen, we as a church, brothers and sisters, again, as the children of Israel in Jesus' day rejected Jesus and crucified him, our leaders are doing the same thing to these self supporting ministries or these individual elders in that church or whoever who's preaching present truth and standing up for the Bible and spirit of Christ and telling people, listen, follow Christ and don't follow man. Let God be your leader and not man. But man, we want man to be our leader. We want we want man to tell us when we should go and when we shouldn't go. No, God tells you that. No man tells you what you should go and not you should go. But there's a message that we must preach. There's a message that we must teach. And there's a way that we must do it. 
But yeah, we have gotten so caught up with, you know what, the only difference between the seven day Adventist church in Rome is the Sabbath. Because our system is set up the same way they are set up, following man and not following God. And, then, and God's going to deal with us if we don't get if we don't if we don't straighten this thing up really soon. We're causing God's people to sin. If we are held, we have upheld the spirit of prophecy as we should have, and told people it used to be a time, brothers and sisters, in the seven day in the church that you can say you can live without sin. It's been a time that we used to teach vegetarianism. It's a, it's a, it was the time we taught all things that we don't teach that we stopped teaching. You can't even go into the seven day in the church. Matter of fact. If I if I thought someone could preach, well, I know someone can teach. But if I had set this up, go to Seventh Day Adventist Church and and record the sermon. See if you heard a three hundred message tomorrow in a, in a popular church. Just is sad, brothers and sisters. We, we, I mean, you get some service, you get some matter of fact, you get some sermons right on Sunday, then you get in our churches, and we know better because we haven't raised, we haven't lifted the prophet up as we should have. We haven't told the world that we had a a last day prophet, brothers and sisters. We haven't told the world that, listen, God has a church who believes in keeping the commandments of God. And we teach, oh, everybody going to be saved. If you believe in Jesus Christ, everybody ain't going to be saved. That's a lie. Jesus said many, many will be lost. Many will be lost. Only a few will be saved. First off, I want to say that I do believe in Ellen White. I do believe by faith that she is a prophet. And, and uh, But I will have to say also, there's a spirit that goes along with following that prophet. Following because we believe she's tied to Christ. So us being tied to Christ as well, there has to be a certain spirit that goes along with it. We do know there are different personalities, yet one faith. There are other folks that can disseminate with such zeal for their profit. Yeah. You have Muhammad, you have Joseph Bates, and you can sit down and someone can and, and to, uh, elaborate uh, just as passionate for their belief, for their profit. So what's the difference and how we do we need to defend Sister White as a prophet? Do we need to defend Jesus Christ as the, the creator? All we need to do is present or it. Should our life, or it should, I mean, well, something else that need to be because people, certain, certain, certain people, def well, some certain people defend it by killing you. That's the question. The lifestyle and your voice. The Bible says in the Bible and prophet teaches that we must not only buy a lifestyle, but we have our voice. God gave us a voice. We must tell and we must show. And so right, that right, right. Well, what I'm saying, you can we can tell, we can show, but what type of spirit is one to if there is should there be something different in what we believe and how we share what we believe? No, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Well, that, 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 listen, there's a time to go to the temple with some grips and, and put people in, in place. And there's a time when they say, come follow Jesus. There's a time. There's a time for time for their straight testimonies. There's a time that you lead gently. But the time we're living in, it's we, the Bible said, cry loud and spare not. And we're living in the last days. And if we're looking for somebody to lead us gently, and matter of fact, you know what? There's a sad commentary. I'll I never forget, brother and sister. I, I, I was in a church in, in Florida years ago, and they were, and you know, and it's sad because our church, when they get a new pastor, they ask the people what kind of what kind of pastor you want. That, that's a foolish question. What do you mean what kind of pastor you want? You want a pastor to keep the commandment of God and on Jesus Christ. But they, they meet with church and they ask these questions. But it's foolish to me. And I was like, wow, they really asking the church that? And so, and some one church member said, Oh, we want a pastor leader generally. Seriously? Oh, you want the devil. That's what you want. You need your gentleman. Brothers and sisters, it is time. We're living in the last days. If we're not crying now and sparing not now, we will never do it. And God wants men that true to the duty as needle to the pole. Men will not be bought nor sold. Men who stand true to duty so the heavens may fall. That's who God wants, brothers and sisters. God, listen, 
if a church is not teaching Jesus Christ and his commandments and God the Father and the Holy Spirit, they're not God. I don't care who they are. It can be, listen, I got family members, Sunday members, Sunday to go to church on Sunday. They know about the Sabbath. But if they don't change, they're going to be lost. Brothers that I love dearly. But hey, sisters that I love dearly. But if they don't change, if they know about, they do know about stuff because I told them, I tell them all the time. And uh, so therefore, brothers and sisters, if they continue to go down that road and don't change, do I expect God for them to say, listen, only one disobedience, only disobedience, let's not call it sin. Disobedience bars up from heaven. Unconfessed disobedience. When God say, do this, and you don't do it, God say, don't touch the ark. And you reach forth your hand and, and grab and the ark will begin to rock. And you reach forth your hand and try to stay with the ark. And God consume you as, as a pitch of fire. And you and you struck dead. You think God is playing? I mean, God, Nadab and Bahu, and they offered strange fire in the temple. And God struck them dead. And he told Aaron, you might not cry. That's in the Bible. You think God is playing with us because we don't? Oh, they, they and you know what? And, and the truly unconverted person always says, "Oh, he didn't speak to me in love." Yeah, listen, brothers and sisters, when someone comes into a when there's a fire, guess what? You want someone to say, "Hey, it's a fire." You don't want to say, "Oh, there's a fire." We're living in time, brothers and sisters. We've been led wrongly for so many times because we're saying to people, "Oh, God, give you time." Don't worry about it. That brother don't love you. He's, he's not having the right spirit. But guess what? You better be worrying about what he said and not what spirit he has. And pray for him that he, that if God, because God may have had him to say hard things. The spirit of prophecy says the Bible teaches that when the, you know, you know what, brothers and sisters? When the prophet showed up, they thought they was going to die. Go read the Bible. When the prophet showed up, they thought judgment was coming. Because it was, because God had dealt with him so long, and the prophet came and said, Listen, this is the last warning. Look at Nineveh. Jonah, God told Jonah, Hey, go to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go. But guess what happened? When Jonah, when, when Jonah did go with, the people said, Listen, everybody's going to fast. The mule, the donkey, and everybody, we have sinned against God. Let us fast. Brothers and sisters, God, listen, we living in the last days. It's not time for us to worry about how somebody's speaking to me. Really, you, you care about, I guess if they tell you, you got a million dollars, would you care? If they said that to you, you don't care about that. You got a brand new car, you got a car, got a car. And you can yell, yell and scream to y'all at you, you won't care about that. But as soon as God, somebody tell you, to put away sin and let's do what God said to do, or you don't say it in love, don't say it in the right spirit. But guess what? God is not going to ask you did that person say it in the right spirit. He can ask you, what did, what, did they tell you what is true? Now, he may deal with that person about the way they spoke to you. He may deal with them or not. But God will say, did he tell you or did she tell you what was true? What law, but he didn't say it in the right spirit. But did he, was he truth? It ain't about what someone said about what is the truth. But that person that can say it could be lost because, of, right. the way they say, because of the way they say it. Because of what they exert. That's right. So what I'm saying, the word of God is true. And right. that's no doubt. God speaks to us in a still, small voice. He can speak to us in thunder and lightning or well, have the earth shake, have the mountain shake. He can speak to yeah. us either way. Yeah. You can but have that's him. The, the, I come to that's, right. That's him. So what I'm saying, everybody's different. Right. Everybody's right. different. And, right. and, and with everybody being different, that means... I shouldn't exert my personality onto somebody else. Yes. Someone else shouldn't exert their personality onto me to make me yes. feel like that because I'm not doing it that way or saying it this way, that I'm not in the right camp or I'm be lost or I'm a, I don't, me, you know, I need to go back. We all need to go back. We all need to go back and study for ourselves and fall out on the rock and be broken. And, I, and everybody on here, I, be, I know and I do believe with all my heart, are sincere Christians are seeking to follow and are following God by faith. And we're so, living so, the last days. We so are living the, the last days. So if that's the case then, Brother Tony, then the words should never come out of your mouth nor my mouth 
then, oh, we should speak in love. That should never come out of our mouth. If everybody's different. Well, you, can't, you can't say that because the Bible said faith, love, and hope. And out of these three is, is love. So you can't do away with the love. And no, no, if no. the love is, is the love should be, a, you know, love shouldn't be, it, any and everything is distorted. But Jesus says, but God said, I am love. So that's the thing we got to hold on to. So let me ask you a question. Real quick, hold on. Let me see if we come to pause. When Jesus called the Pharisees, hypocrites, vipers, do you think he loved them when he said that to them? Yeah, he did. Yeah, if I call you a hypocrite, would you, if I call you a hypocrite, a, a snake, would you love me? Would you think I love you if I call you that? I call people hypocrites. No, I'm just And I call somebody to the face that they're here, that they're being a hypocrite. But that doesn't but, mean that I, I you know, don't I can be you. hard. We all can be hard. We can all get straight to the point. I, you go. I want you to let you know. So it ain't, it ain't yeah. so much. You, you, to, to say, listen, hold on so we can pause. Brothers and sisters, we can never say what's in somebody's heart because somebody, the way somebody say something. You may think a person don't like you for the way they say things. But they must, them, the people who really speak harsh to you is the one who written nine times out of ten, the ones who really love you. The people who don't love you, Really going to not look at the Bible. It's going to say, "Oh, you know, smooth things." Oh, you got time. You know, Lord, 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 Lord understands. Listen, no, no, no. The Lord understands all things. But, but what I do want to say, brother and sister, whatever we do, let the Lord lead us and guide us to all truth and teach others as well. Not by only by our words, but by example, as we possibly can. Amen. That's the gospel, brothers and sisters. And so we need to uphold the commandments of God and testimony of Jesus Christ. And teach the world so and teach our church so. Because we all trying to make it to heaven. We all, I am, I know I am. And I know I have a squirkle every day, brother and sister. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not thinking about how you talk to me. And I'm not thinking about what you do to me. I'm only thinking about how I treat you. And how I deal with you. And that I'm telling you that all the gospel that God tells me to give you. And if you don't like the way I say it, you can call me back and say, Brother Jones, I don't think you said that in love. And then I would ask you, how do you know what's in my heart? And then you will say, I don't know. So then I'm not going to say that you probably need to be corrected. So therefore, brothers and sisters, I'm saying that each one of us, I hope, love each one of us enough to be honest with each other and tell each other the truth and whether we do. And listen, it's only, brothers and sisters, only what we do for Jesus will last. Only what we do for Christ will last. Now, listen, I don't talk to the world like this. And when I talk to other people that are not of our faith, I don't talk like this. I talk totally different. And But when I deal with our brothers and sisters, when Jesus deal with the Israelites and the Pharisees, he was direct with them. He was because they knew better. We have 70 minutes. We know better. We know better. But they, get, but, but they didn't get on. It seemed like all it seemed like the time that prophets came into play was because God wanted to uh, chastise them. And <laughs> That's not the case. God was continuously trying to divert something. The Bible said those who love each other. So what else did he yeah. say? So give me, give me yeah. an example. Give me an example when the prophet came to the children when they were, wasn't doing wrong. Give me an example when God sent it. When they were doing good, that was all fine. But when they got a hand, God sent it to correct them. Say, look, to warn them. And you can say chastise and warnings, warning, brother and sister. It's warning. Mm -hmm. And we, we should thank God for warnings. God sent warnings all the time. And let's, uh, not, let's not minimize that. If you look at the word, the, the children of Israel stayed out of line. <laughs> I mean, the trust, we, like us, we stay out of line. And God had to constantly had to give the prophet get us back in line. That's the, that's the love of God. Praise God for that. Right. Get that's, us not back in that's, yeah. that's not lesson that, that lesson that God trying Any more questions or comments, brothers and sisters, before we pause into the morning? I got a comment. Go ahead. We know, first of all, we know that that um, we sh we should speak evil of no man, and to to speak evil of any prophet of God. The Lord said, "Speak evil of no man," but to speak evil of a prophet of God, that, you know, that's that's like that's like crucifying Christ, and that's what he did back in his day, and 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 and, and after his day. The button is that the purpose of the gospel is to bring people to the keeping of the commandments 
of God and the faith of Jesus. You know, when the, when the plagues begin to fall, it is because Jesus has left the most holy place. There's no more, no more intercessor. And subsequently, he puts on garments of vengeance. And subsequently, the plagues begin to fall while he's on his way to earth. On a white cloud. Don't you know that while he's on his way to earth, the plagues are falling. The first plague, a noise of grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon those that worshipped his image. That, that's, that's the Sabbath issue. The second plague. The, the sea became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. That's because of the rejection of the Sabbath. The, the third plague, the rivers and fountains became blood. The fourth plague, well, they, then, then you had angels that said, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, for thou, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worth. And then another angel said, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. The plagues are gone. And then the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. Because of rejection of the Sabbath of the Lord. And that's a rejection of, of Jesus, who is Lord of the Sabbath. Power was given him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And blasphemed the name of God because of, of, of the heat that they had to endure. And then the fifth, the fifth angel poured a vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. All of that was because of the rejection of the Lord of the Sabbath. When the, when the Lord of the Sabbath is rejected, all the commandments are rejected. He's still on his way from heaven, though. But the plagues are still falling. And then the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water there was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And then he said, I saw th three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And that's the sixth plague. And then the seventh plague. But this is all because of the rejection of the Sabbath. God is love. He's still on his way from heaven to the earth. And then the seventh plague. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great, great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it, it is done. That's because of, of the rejection of the Sabbath. And then he said, and, and, and there was a great earthquake. Such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. In a great city. Divided into three parts. It goes on further. And, then, and then, then, then a great hail came down and got out of heaven. Every stone about a, the weight of a talent. That's the seventh plague. Last statement tells us that, that up when Jesus comes in the seventh plague. You see. But this is because of love, though. The love of God. So, and, and, a seventh day, the Lord said this in the third chapter of Revelation. He said, because thou sayest thou art Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I'll make, I'll make them to come and worship before thy feet. I'll make thee to come and worship before their feet. That's what he's saying. I'll make thee to come and worship before their feet and to know that I've loved thee, love them. And so this is all, all, all a rejection of God. So, so there are people who claim today to be Seventh-day Adventists. People who claim today to be Sabbath keepers. But don't you know that the Jews as a nation, meaning one, never kept a true Sabbath? Although there were individuals who did. And don't you know that Jesus re had, had, had rejected the Jews as a nation because they had rejected him? Nothing else he could do. And so we just we just want to follow Jesus. Let me give you this one last experience. 
I'm gonna say it say it now because you never know. I, I may not and this may be my last saying, you just never know. But I'll tell you this. The Lord blessed me 15 or 20 years ago. He blessed me with looking at and reading the nine volumes of the testimonies that Ellen White wrote by the Holy Spirit. Nine volumes. But I'm not going to lie, I only read eight and a half of them. But don't you know the Lord had me write down the Bible text of each volume in that book? And, and But this book is one book. All nine volumes are in this one book. Oh, it's cracked up, man. But don't you know that there are Bible texts on every page of the of the nine volumes? Bible texts. And that's only what I knew back then, 15, 20 years ago. Is that many Bible texts? Yeah, plagiarism? Call it what you want. He wrote, she, she wrote the word of God. As God spoke to her. On the written Bible and, 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 and from, 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 from mouth. To her, to her mind, as it were. This is what God gave unto her. Isn't God speaking unto you? We need to obey his voice. My sheep hear my voice. Well, so, you see, we, it doesn't, see, the Seventh day Adventist church is the true church, but everyone that is in the Seventh day Adventist church are not true people to God. You know, their tears. It tears rather, and there's wheat, and so everybody, everybody in the church is not wheat. But the true church of God, He said, "Here's here's the patience of the saints. Here they to keep the commandments of God, and have the faith of Jesus and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophets. That's what prophecy is. The word of prophets." The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. I think it's 2 Samuel 23, 2. Uh, by, the, by David. Uh, we don't talk about David, do we? We don't talk about Moses. Badly. We don't say, oh, God wasn't talking, talking to them. We don't say anything about Paul. Don't you know Paul memorized a great portion of the Old Testament? That's, and he wrote most of the New Testament. Anyway, I'm finished. Praise God. That's just all. That's all I'll say right now. But there's much more that can be said. Thank you for your time. Praise God. Any more comments or thoughts before we close? Any prayer requests or testimony before we pause? Amen, brother. Anyone else? If not, any other spoken prayer requests? Raise your hand. God sees all, knows all. Let us pray. Oh, kind Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful blessings. We thank you for the things you've shown us, Lord. If we have said anything that's contrary to your word, that's something we shouldn't say, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, if we've said anything in a tone that was hateful or mean or, or dictatorial in any way, Lord God, we ask for forgiveness. But Lord, let us preach the word in season, out of season. May one hear it and no one hear it. Thank you, Lord, for bearing along with us. And thank you for your people who stayed long and long. And we ask you to send a special blessing upon them tonight. And we thank you to the angels that have set in strength and the Holy Spirit to camp around us and guide us all truth. And Lord, as we lay on our beds and as we watch and sleep, Lord, we ask you to be with us, watch over us, protect us, and our family members, wherever they may be, bring them into the ark of safety, Lord. But we all want to be saved. We all want to be in that kingdom. We all want to be in that number, Lord. We want to hear your words. Well done, good and faithful servant. In the true joy of the Lord. So this is our prayer and our desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.